George Orwell once said, Every generation imagines itself to be more intelligent than the one that went before it and wiser than the one that comes after it. We as humans are inherently biased towards the generation to which we belong. With the power of hindsight, we see flaws in the past choices of our elders. Equally, we're quick to poke holes in the ideologies of younger generations. One narrative which has been the center of much debate over the past decade is that millennials are the unluckiest generation in history. But how true is this? We'll classify the millennial generation as anyone born between 1981 and 1996. The oldest of this generation have started into their 40s, whereas the youngest are starting into their late 20s. Let's begin by defining the problem. Millennials are under no delusions that they are in fact the literal unluckiest generation in history. To think as much would be idiotic. The generations of the early 1900s were characterized by war, disease, and economic depression. Instead, when millennials talk about their woes, they're talking about income, wealth, and home ownership. There's a tendency among baby boomers and Generation X to devalue the struggles faced by millennials. For example, the idea of millennials being addicted to buying expensive breakfasts featuring avocado toast was often used as the rationale for why this generation couldn't afford a home. This was of course not believed to be true, but instead it was a metaphor used to show that millennials were financially irresponsible and only had themselves to blame for their situation. There's this tendency for older generations to inflate and miscalculate calculate the costs of younger generations. Part of this could be explained by what's known as generational conflict. The paper, The Internet, Youth Safety and the Problem of Juvenoia talks about this idea of generational conflict. Young people have more time and cognitive agility to adapt to new technologies and values, while also not being invested in the ways of older generations. Older generations see these changes as a threat to their values and way of life, resulting in a biased, negative disposition towards them. More often than not, these are things possessed by the younger generation which older generations did not have access to. Smartphones, ease of travel, entertainment options. As Sarah Manovitz puts it in the article Boomer Mathematics, easy access to an abundance of these things becomes equated wrongly with overspending, superficiality and frivolity. Older generations identify differences in the way of life of younger generations and attribute those differences as a cause and effect to the unique problems faced by those younger generations. You can't buy a home because you're addicted to avocado toast. Sarah makes the point that from the perspective of older generations, it isn't that millennials have it harder when it comes to affording key milestones like home ownership. It's just that they've made poor financial decisions, something that older generations avoided through sacrifice and hard work. But we know this is false. The US Federal Reserve in 2018 released a research paper entitled Are Millennials Different? And they found that millennials are are less well off than earlier generations as compared to when they were young and are characterized by lower earnings, fewer assets and less wealth. The Fed also found that quote, millennials do not appear to have preferences for consumption that differ significantly from those of earlier generations, meaning millennial spending habits are not the root cause of millennial woes. So let's explore the reasons behind the differences in earnings, assets and wealth and what these differences really amount to. The Great Recession of 0809 was the leading contributor to the lower earnings experienced by millennials in comparison to Gen X and baby boomers. The paper Did Timing Matter? Life Cycle Differences in Effects of Exposure to the Great Recession found that millennials experienced the worst comparative earnings losses between 2007 and 2017, even though their employment levels recovered faster than both Gen X and baby boomers. This phenomenon is is attributed to scarring effects. Exposure to a recession makes it less likely that a generation will work for higher paying employers in the future. This is especially true if recessionary conditions are experienced upon entry to the labor market. The paper also notes that part of the divergence between employment and earnings post-recession could be explained by lower educational attainment by millennials as a consequence of unemployment. Despite this, the paper The Wealth of Generations with Special Attention to the Millennials notes that millennials have the greatest level of formal education than any generation in history, with over 60% of millennials having attended college. This presents its own challenges as those with higher education tend to live longer, resulting in greater financing requirements post-retirement. Although millennials are more educated, they're currently earning 20% less
less than what baby boomers earned at the same age. Research by the Washington Post shows that millennials have experienced the worst GDP growth per person in their first 15 years in the workforce as compared to any generation since 1792. Interestingly, data from the Pew Research Center shows that millennial households are earning more than any other young household in the past 50 years. At a first glance, this directly contradicts the findings by the US Federal Reserve. However, the explanation leads us to a very important distinction. Millennial households are performing well because women are working more and getting paid more as compared to previous generations. Despite this, Pew Research found that the number of millennial households with two earners fell from 49% in 2000 to 44% in 2017. Therefore, millennials as individuals are less well off than previous generations, but millennial households, albeit rarer, are comparably earning more. In 2019, Pew Research found that only 30% of millennials lived with a spouse and child, compared to 40% of Gen X, 46% of boomers, and 70% of the silent generation at the same age. Only 44% of millennials were married in 2019, compared with 53% of Gen X, 61% of boomers, and 81% of the silent generation at the same age. The major finding here is that the majority of millennials are delaying marriage and family life far beyond what previous generations have seen. However, cohabitation is much more common among millennials. Research from the Urban Institute entitled Millennial Home Ownership, Why Is It So Low and How Can We Increase It? suggested that marital status positively impacts home ownership rates. The researchers hypothesized that if marriage rates among millennials were as high as the rates in 1990, then home ownership among millennials would be approximately 5% higher than it is today. They also also suggests that having a child increases the probability of owning a home by 6.2%. However, data from the National Association of Realtors shows that unmarried couples accounted for 16% of first-time buyers in 2017, which is the highest number on record. So while marriage might increase the likelihood of owning a home, millennials are equally becoming more comfortable buying a home outside of marriage. With that being said, let's talk about home ownership in more detail. According to a report by The Apartment List, at age 30, 42% of millennials own a home. This trails both Gen X and baby boomers, whose ownership rates at the same age stood at 48% and 51% respectively. Of those millennials who rent, 18% believe they will rent forever, with 74% of this group highlighting affordability as the main reason why. In the US, house prices went up by over 18% between December 2020 and December 2021. However, house prices alone are not the deciding factor. The relationship between house prices and wages is what matters. A 2020 report showed that since 2012, US starter homes have increased in price by 86%, whereas wages for those most likely to buy those homes only rose by 24%. Separately, it was found that the real value of the US minimum wage has fallen by 31% since 1968. The bottom line, affordability has worsened for millennials. Many millennials are also far from being in a position where they can purchase a home, with 63% saying they have no money saved for a down payment. However, in 2021, millennials accounted for 67% of all first-time buyer mortgage applications in the US and 37% of non-first-time buyer applications. This is unsurprising as mortgage interest rates bottomed out at the beginning of 2021, in addition to the fact that millennial household incomes are at record highs, which we previously discussed. But for individual millennials, buying a home is something of a pipe dream as house prices continue to rise at faster rates than wages. Plus, with rents growing at faster rates than house prices in many countries, along with strict lending criteria, saving for a down payment and getting a mortgage is very difficult. We know that the median age of first-time buyers for millennials is 33, compared to 28 in 1981. You could hypothesize that millennials choosing to delay life milestones such as marriage and having children is resulting in additional hardships buying a home. But we have to ask ourselves the question as to whether we as a society believe it's fair that only those who choose that life should be able to afford a home. In terms of wealth, some research as of late suggests that the extent of millennial woes might not be as bad as once thought. A recent St. Louis Fed report showed that millennials born in the 1980s had closed the deficit in wealth expectations from 40% in 2016 to 11% in 2019. This could largely
largely be explained by the uptick in housing market participation by older millennials. However, millennials born in the 1990s were still 50% behind wealth expectations in 2019. This means that millennials in their late 30s were able to make up significant ground in just three years, but still remain 11% behind expectations. We therefore need to ask the question as to whether the younger millennials can pull off a similar recovery. Bear in mind that the segment of millennials who are now in their early 30s have been hit by both the Great Recession and the global pandemic, which we know disproportionately impacted millennials in terms of unemployment. Contrary to the belief that millennials are financially irresponsible, they're actually very keen to invest and save for the future. Outside of owning a home, investment portfolios and pensions will likely be the next largest source of wealth for millennials. According to the CFA Institute, for those millennials investing outside of their retirement accounts, 31% started before the age of 21, as compared to 14% of Gen X and 9% of baby boomers at the same age. Part of this is likely due to the democratization of investing over the past decade. However, not all millennials are on the same page. The same research from the CFA Institute showed that many millennials aren't investing because of low income, low savings, high debt and priorities given to housing. When it comes to retirement, millennials once again face unique challenges. The European Commission estimates that the proportion of people aged 80 and over will increase by 250% by 2100. People are living longer, which means they require much larger financial resources post-retirement to fund that existence. This means millennials have perhaps the greatest need for retirement savings as compared to any other generation in history. To make matters more difficult, government support via social security in the US and the state pension in European countries is not as guaranteed as it once was. More people in retirement means more people drawing on financial support, which is not sustainable. So millennials are in a situation where they're currently paying for the retirement of older generations via social insurance contributions with no guarantee that they'll receive the same treatment in the future. Plus, with the move away from defined benefit pension schemes, which many baby boomers had access to, the burden is very much on millennials to invest for retirement. So if we consider the position of the average millennial based on what we've discussed, there's the issue of stagnating wages, which makes housing affordability very difficult. You also have increasing rental costs, as well as overall increases in the cost of living. On top of the pressure of getting on the housing ladder, millennials also need to consider their investments for retirement and how they'll find room to set money aside for that purpose. So it's not that millennials are the literal unluckiest generation in history, but rather it's that millennials are up against a very unique set of challenges which financially are very difficult to overcome. In the words of Sarah Manavis, older generations never actually made smarter decisions than millennials. They were just in the right place at the right time, lucky enough to be born during a period when the likes of housing was actually affordable. This argument between generations about who had it harder is pointless. Every generation has its own set of values and faces its own set of problems. Earlier we mentioned the paper The Internet, Youth Safety and the Problem of Juvenile. The concept of developmental life course role shift is discussed in that paper. Essentially, the author proposes that younger generations are inherently self-centered as they try to figure out their commitments, i.e. where they'll live, what they'll become and what activities they'll pursue. Once you get older and your commitments solidify, you gain major responsibility for things like children, family and occupation. Millennials have push these commitments beyond the usual age. So older generations see this self-centeredness in millennials who are still figuring it all out and it makes them uncomfortable. But in reality, it's the older generations who've changed by solidifying their commitments. The millennial generation grew up during the height of the digital transformation. In many ways, the microscope of society had never been focused as much on an individual generation as it was for them. Factually, this generation is characterized by lower earnings, less assets and lower wealth. Millennials are questioning the values held by Gen X and baby boomers, and they're redefining what it means to lead a modern life. The millennial generation has many substratas, each of which has their own challenges, including education, 
educational and wealth inequalities. Challenges aside, younger generations are taking more time to figure out what lives they want for themselves. And that's not a bad thing. In the digital era, where truly anything is possible, we should welcome these newfound challenges and work towards productive solutions. Not in the best interests of any one generation, but in the best interests of society. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.